Perhaps the most interesting problem that my colleagues and I have been trying to understand using computers is what happens when two black holes orbit around each other, spiral together, collide, and merge. Uh, we do know from simple arguments, simple analytical arguments with pencil and paper, some things about this. First, we know that the power output that's coming out from this collision is big. During the collision, there is more power comes out than the total power from all of the stars in the universe put together, 10,000 times more. The luminosity or power of colliding black holes is 10,000 universe luminosities. I mean, this is un unbelievable. It's for a short time during the collision, but this is the most violent process that has occurred ever in the universe with the exception of the Big Bang itself. And no electromagnetic waves are emitted in this process. All of this power comes out in gravitational waves. Why? Because to make electromagnetic waves, to make light or radio waves, you must have electrical charges that oscillate, that move. But the black hole is not made of matter. There are no charges to oscillate. The black hole is made from warped space and warped time, and so it can't produce electromagnetic waves. Instead, it produces these gravitational waves that are made from the same thing as the black hole. These gravitational waves come out to us and they should bring us a detailed picture of what happens when the black holes collide. The picture is contained in gravitational waveform that I will talk about in a few minutes. It's the shape of the gravitational wave that comes past. It carries information about the collision in the same way that the sound from a symphony orchestra contains information both about the composer uh, the mood of the composer when the composer made the, uh, uh, wrote this symphonic piece and information about what instruments are being played, a violin, an oboe, and so forth. In the same way, the gravitational wave shapes carry detailed information about how space and time are behaving when black holes collide. And this, for me, is a very exciting uh, possibility because each black hole spins, and as it spins, it drags space into a whirlpool motion. So we have two whirlpools, or two tornadoes, spinning. And as the black holes orbit around each other, that orbital motion also drags space into a whirling vortex, a whirlpool motion. And so we have two tornadoes contained in a third larger tornado. And these tornadoes are coming together and crashing together. And we want to know what happens when the tornadoes are made from whirling space and warp time. This is perhaps the most profound way to, to explore the nature of space and time that we have today is to explore uh, how the warped space and time behave in these collisions of whirling space of two black holes. I'm going to show you a movie from numerical simulations, numerical relativity, an example. This movie will not, is of two black holes spiraling together and colliding, but these black holes are not spinning, so they're not very interesting. Nevertheless, it is impressive what happens in this movie for the non-spinning case. You're going to see three things in this movie. At the top you will see two black holes. One is here, the other is off the screen. These are black spheres. This is how the black hole would look if you looked at it in our universe with a blue sky behind. Of course you really have stars behind, but in this simulation we uh, just show a blue sky behind. Down here is a picture of the collision as seen by uh, somebody looking in on our universe from a higher dimension. Like our universe is a sheet, a two-dimensional sheet. The black hole is bent down, space is warped down there as I showed you before. 
the arrows show space dragged into motion, but not a whirlpool motion, not a circulating motion, because these black holes are not uh, spinning. Uh, and down here you see the gravitational wave form, the shape of the gravitational wave that's emitted. And as the movie goes, here you see where we are in the wave form. We see the two black holes as in our universe going around each other. We see the black holes looking in from the outside. The colors are encoding the warping of time. Now I jumped way over to the end because the in-spiral is boring. Now we will see the black holes collide and I'll stop the movie while they collide so you can Im Im admire these colliding black holes. And now the final black hole vibrates a little and settles down. It has become a single black hole, but in that process, an enormous amount of power has come off in gravitational waves, which we will use to observe this. Now, spinning black holes are much more interesting, and for the next several minutes, I will tell you about results that have not yet been published. These are the newest and to me very exciting results from the simulations that are being done by a group that, at Caltech, my research group, the group led by Professor Saul Tukolsky at Cornell University, and a group that is uh, led uh, uh, by uh, Dr. Professor Harold Pfeiffer at, in Canada at the University of Toronto. What we have learned just very recently from a combination of simulations and theory is that not only does space whirl around a black hole, but there are guiding lines that stick out of the black hole that are very much like magnetic field lines. You know the Earth has a magnetic field. It, magnetic field lines uh, reach out and around from the North Pole to the South Pole. These are like uh, magnetic field lines, but they are the lines in curved empty space that control the whirling motion of space. We call these vortex lines. And these lines have the property that if you go in here and you are hanging above the black hole, suspended by, uh, by a rope, that your feet are pulled into motion faster than your head. And so when you look down, you see your feet going around in a counterclockwise direction but your feet look up at your head, which was going more slowly, so it looks like it's going in the opposite direction. But if you think about this, as seen by your, from your feet, your head looks like it's going counterclockwise. So it turns out, sticking out of the north pole of the black hole, there are counterclockwise vortex lines that control this spinning space. Sticking out of the South Pole, there are the opposite kinds of vortex lines that control the spinning space out of the South Pole. So these are clockwise vortex lines. They put a clockwise twist on a person. These put a counterclockwise twist on a person. Here now are two black holes. This is from a movie that I will show you in a moment. Two black holes that are going to collide. They're moving toward each other. And each, this is the horizon of the black hole, but we have painted the horizon. Again, this is from a simulation. We have painted the horizon red in the region where these uh, counterclockwise vortex lines come out. So where you see it red, space is whirling around in that direction. And where you see it blue, it's uh, whirling around in the opposite direction. Space is whirling. Uh, and, uh, and these uh, black holes will collide and merge, and the wonderful thing we've discovered is when the black holes collide and merge, they place on the merged horizon. This is the, uh, the boundary that you go inside here, you can never get out. They put on the merged horizon both of the vortexes from the first black hole and two vortexes from the second black hole. And if this is two black holes orbiting each other, there would be two more vortexes from the orbital motion put on here. But in this case, it's a head-on collision. And so there are four vortexes sticking out of the black hole. Black holes are not so simple as we thought they were. They have these interesting whirling space around them. So here is a movie, and you will watch what happens after 
the black holes collide and merge. So they're coming together, they raise a tide on each other. Now look, this was a blue vortex, now it's a red vortex. Now it's a blue vortex. Now it's a red vortex. Now it's blue. What's happening is that as soon as the two, as the vortexes see each other on the black hole's horizon, they don't like to have neighbors and they slow each other down. So this vortex is going like that and the neighbor slows it down and then it overshoots and it goes back and goes the other direction. And it goes in one direction, then in the other direction, then in the first direction and then the other direction. And what happens to the vortex lines? I don't have a good movie, but I have some, uh, some snapshots, some pictures from of what happens to the vortex lines. Each time these vortexes turn around their direction, these vortex lines come off the black hole because it's no longer spinning, and they connect up around to the other side of the black hole, and they make a smoke ring. It's, this is very much like a smoke ring. It's a whirling donut or toroidal shaped uh, vortex with its vortex lines guiding it, controlling it. And this is from uh, an oscillation where it turned around uh, that uh, occurred a little while ago. This was the next oscillation and these vortex lines, they will make the next uh, the next donut shaped or tor toroidal shaped uh, vortex of whirling space, these travel out toward the Earth and they become gravitational waves. It's rather remarkable. This is how a black hole makes its gravitational waves. If that, that's the special case where the black holes collide head on. Now if the black holes are orbiting around each other, then when they collide and merge, their vortex lines reach out in spiral arms, like the spiral arms of a galaxy, uh, and travel out in that way, becoming gravitational waves. And so each of these, this is a whirling space. It, the whirling becomes weaker farther away from the black hole, but this is, becomes the gravitational waves that we uh, are seeking to detect on Earth. So this is an example of what the, of the wonderful new things we're learning about how warped space and warped time can behave.